the, 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 you're never too old for Kool-Aid. Oh, okay. That's the one. I love that one. Yeah. So, I, that one has to be from like the seventies. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 It's like late seventies. I would say based yeah. on like the color and composition. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. So yeah, I, um, I mean, I found this Kool-Aid ad of this, like, you know, this older lady wearing this like bucket hat, um, like drinking Kool-Aid, uh, like purple Kool-Aid. And it, it was just an incredible image. I just, I, I, I like had to make a print of it. So I, I chose this one because it was just, um, it was a young, it was like, it's like a younger, uh, it's like a younger product. It's like a product advertised to like, you know, children, but there was an older woman within the advertisement. Mm -hmm. And I just generally feel like there's not as much visibility to, to like older women in general. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to use this advertisement to, you know, give, give her some like space. What made you, I mean, it seems that Ebony Magani magazines you've used in many of your series. Yeah. Is there? I, um, I used, I used them because uh, I really wanted to include, include black women within my work. And I also really, I love the, the large format of the magazine. And I would say that, um, like fashion, fashion and um, colors and styles uh, between like the 50s and 70s have this kind of timeless look to them. Um, like people recognize that the time frame, but it's I'd say that the those looks um, have a lot of potential to flip between the past and present in a way that a lot of other um, styles don't necessarily do. Uh, so it's it's a way of like culturally connecting um, like the past and present. What I love about these, um, not only just the color composition and how you transfer and the process, and there's so many layers to your work. So uh, not just what you're communicating, but also the process that you're using. Um, yeah. But the texture that is created through this process is is amazing. There is like almost, you know, blurring yeah. that configuration with the abstraction. Um, you know, playing with this idea of advertisement and empowerment through advertisement or the lack thereof. But then, you know, this, this movement that is communicated through this texture that happens from that transfer that you're doing, I think mm -hmm. really you can get lost in that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing how yeah. that moves around and it adds to the story of your process in many ways. Definitely. Yeah, the process is very, is very visible, I'd say, within the work. But, um, but there's, I, I mean, I really like how there's still questions around the way that it's actually done. So it's, yeah, what I enjoy, I mean, whenever I look at art, and this is probably, I'm sure a lot of people, I'm not the only crazy one, but I like to get as close as possible, as close as they allow me to get close, so that I can, yeah. um, follow the brushstrokes let's say or yeah. I can follow that movement of that artist and say okay this is where they took this brushstroke and they moved it down or and how that and get into that movement that that artist was doing when they were creating definitely and for me for your work I can do that and but it has like a different feeling to it because of your it's like water <laughs> It's like, uh, it's like looking at like, you know, a moving river. There's like, there's a lot of movement in it, but it's not necessarily, uh, it's very spontaneous. There's, there's not really, um, I don't, I don't have a lot of control over, over the pattern that's created when making these, which is really fun. Yeah. It's like taking a deep breath. It's like, this is what, this is what's happening. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna to have to accept this work for for what it is and appreciate the the results regardless. So it's so what do you have lined up for? Well, I mean, if 2020 has anything happening, but at least or 2021, yeah. let's say. Uh, so I have uh, so I got accepted for a couple of residencies 
and they were going to be this summer, but of course they're going to be hopefully next summer. And um, I got I I got accepted for the stone leaf retreat um, with uh, with Helen Tomer, which is very exciting. Great. And um, I know I'm really stoked about it. And then uh, the the Elizabeth Murray Foundation residency and then the Wasaic project. Oh, I love I'll, I'll be up there for, for a month. Yeah, so that's what's on the list. Yeah. And then um, are you going to be building towards this series, the Ebony series, or you think you're going to be, because you have, when you look at your website, you have so many phenomenal, like, different mediums that you use and that you're constantly investigating. So I, I'm going to continue working with the, the Ebony reprinted series, but I've also been working um, uh, on on wood panel and creating these these uh, smaller collage um, collage and painting works that are a lot more it's like a lot more a lot more detailed um, and a lot more uh, I guess a lot more focused a lot more you know it's me like hovering over my desk with like you know a tiny brush <laughs> for for a while um, making these so that's another project that I'm working on as well. Are those and, ones that are also being shown at Untitled right now, or is that the same ser that series? They're, yeah, they're going to be. Yeah, they're in the uh, the Selena's the Selena's Madden, um, booth. Oh, it's booth A six. It's A six. So, yes. Okay, that's great. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. All right. Well, it was so good talking right, with you. It's good talking to you yeah. too. I'll talk Bye. to you. Bye. Yeah. See you later. Bye.